I assume many of you, maybe most of you, own one of these smartphones. Because of these, political campaigns today are different. <laughs> We're volunteers with the not. Ted Cruz campaign. I was wondering if we could ask you a couple of questions. Absolutely. Door knocking's old, but the way Steve and Debbie do it now is new. They are at this door only because their phones told them the people who live here might vote for Ted Cruz. We have set out the objective at the outset of the campaign to run the most data-driven, data-analytic campaign in the history of politics. Obama did that both times he ran. The Obama campaign had a secret weapon that it used to defeat Mitt Romney, a highly technical, sophisticated data mining operation. Beyond anything that modern political campaigns have seen. The campaign manager for the Obama campaign said that the biggest institutional advantage they had over the Romney campaign was its use of data. Emily and studies how data influences politics. Many Republican insiders tended to be very exclusive and a little bit closed-minded when it came to using new methodologies. However, after 2012, that changed. They are a Super Bowl team that we ought to respect deeply. The Obama campaign tested everything. They said that they conducted more than 500 different experiments on their websites. They found that when they had a picture of President Obama with an inspirational quote, they raised significantly more money than when they had the same page but just a picture of Obama. Obama's data operation was led by Harper Reed. The Obama campaign's real heroes. Harper Reed, the technology mastermind behind Obama's win. I'm an incredible person. This is basically, this is a very straightforward thing here. You got credit for Obama's victory. I was just a cog. I just looked differently, so the media didn't know what to do with me. The media said the Romney campaign was high tech. On election day, the campaign will activate a sophisticated system for tracking their get out the vote efforts. But we know how that story ends. Romney had four people working in data analytics. Obama had 50. And he had something called Project Narwhal, a data program with a code name. Team named it Narwhal after a whale of amazing strength. The actual truth is pretty boring. So we named it Narwhal because we wanted a code name that would be fun to say. People were like, ah, Narwhal. You know, it was like a really, it was kind of a joke, really. And once it leaked, um, nobody knew what to do because suddenly there was this mythical Narwhal. And then everyone was like, what's Narwhal? Meanwhile, Romney's team had Orca, a database named for another sea creature. On election day, it crashed. You literally had 35,000 volunteers whose job was to get out the vote, wandering around like zombies with no direction. Have the Republicans now caught up? If they haven't caught up, it's, it's their fault. She's definitely considering Ted, which is fantastic. We have caught up, says the Cruz campaign. I went and bought a copy of David Plouffe, Obama's campaign manager's book, The Audacity to Win, gave it to our senior team said we are going to nakedly and shamelessly emulate this. And that's very much the plan on this campaign. He made it very clear that this was an area, the use of data and analytics, that he would not fall behind in. Chris Wilson runs Cruz's technology operation. Why do you think the Democrats were ahead of the Republicans? The Silicon Valley environment, it tends to be more liberal. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, the founders of Google have been aggressive about taking some of their technologies and applying them and helping the Democrats use them. You're going to be working in the West Des Moines 314. Now, uh, check your phone. Each volunteer's phone tells him where to go. See your neighborhood, and you're, you're in here for a reason. You've caucused before as a Republican. Earlier at headquarters, Stephen explained how it works. Click on each individual house. It pops up. The names of the people living there, their, their ages, we hit their name, and it gives us a script to go by question-wise. Can Ted Cruz count on your support at the caucus? in February. I haven't quite made up you my mind yet. Mind. You're undecided. Okay. Depending on the voter's answer, the phone tells Stephen what to say next. Is Ted a candidate you're considering? Very much so. Great. Totally different than what we used to do. All this information data comes straight back to the campaign. Whereas in the past, if I had my little piece of paper with the thing on there, you know, I might be able to write down, yes, they're interested, but this is instantaneous. Here, the volunteer's phone told him, don't knock on this guy's door. And the man was curious why. I'm a Democrat, but that way. Okay, that's why you're not on our app. <laughs> <laughs> the data had determined that knocking would have been a waste of volunteers' time and the campaign's money. They know a lot about each voter. 
Thank you. Bye-bye. If they subscribe to this magazine or watch this TV show, then you know they're more likely to vote for Ted? That's two factors of 50 to 70,000. They even know what you eat. For someone who buys arugula, we found that they tend to be a little bit more democratic, where someone who buys iceberg lettuce tends to be more Republican. Trucks, not surprisingly, tend to be driven more by Republicans. Democratic cars, Volvos. How do you know this? This is all information that's on the open market. There are companies that amass enormous amounts of data, consumer data. And a lot of people don't know about this, but the types of data they collect are based on transactions that you and I make. Whether we opened a store loyalty card, whether we subscribed to a magazine, all of this is logged. When you get a knock on your door from canvassers, the message that you receive is likely informed by this kind of data analytics. Do voters mind being targeted because a campaign has specific data on them? That's a scary thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's excellent. Uh, use every tool we can because we have to defeat those people. They're using them. The corporate world has done this for years. One day, an angry father showed up at a Target store and asked to speak to the manager. The manager came out and the, and the father said, you've been sending my high school age daughter ads and coupons for baby cribs and diapers. She's in high school. You're encouraging her to get pregnant. And the manager just felt terrible. He said, I'm so sorry. But one week later, the manager called the father back to apologize again. And the father said, actually, I owe you an apology. I just spoke with my daughter, my teenage daughter. It turns out she's pregnant. Target knew before dad did. Target had identified 25 different products that when people start to buy those things in combination with each other, it means that they're likely pregnant. Ted Cruz for president, how may we help you? Now the Cruz campaign says it knows even more what your personality is like. We are doing things that no one else is doing. Like? Like the use of personality modeling. Personality modeling tells Chris and his team who's going to vote, how they're going to vote, and what issues they care about. Chris shows us the database that tells him what voters care about. They respond to different colors, they respond to different pictures. So to reach personalities the campaign determines to be more traditional, they use blue or neutral tones, red or orange if they think you're an extrovert. If we're talking temperamental voters, we use words like alarmed, vulnerable, authority. So your foot soldier goes to his door, they know what buttons to push. They do. It's different from when the male comes to the door or where the female comes to the door. We know where they are on moral issues, on immigration, where they are on national security, where they may be on gun rights. Not just where they are, but why. Maybe one person supports the Second Amendment because when, when they were a child, they went duck hunting with their grandfather. And so for them, it brings back nostalgia, sense of family. Now, if that's the case, you can craft a message that, that hits to why they care about it. If you're a single mom, if you're carrying a revolver in your purse that you don't want to get mugged, a duck hunting ad is not going to do a thing to connect with you. So just on the Second Amendment, we have a dozen different messages. We have a cruise app that thousands of people across the country have downloaded onto their phones. The Obama campaign did that too. By signing up for the app, they were able to identify the friends of the supporters and they would send messages to their supporters saying, hey, would you click this button to share with this friend? And it reached about five million people. And having friends talk to friends is apparently most persuasive. The best way to connect with a voter is not through a TV ad, although that helps, but it's from them to hear why a person that is important to them, a friend or family member, from a friend. We've made it a game, and so we have grassroots activists competing to spread the word. We'd like for you to reach out to 10 of your friends today. If you do so, you'll get 1,000 points, and you're only 900 points for making that next level. And what do you get for points? You can't buy anything with them. You get badges, and you move up the rank. He gets your friends to see who can become the best Ted Cruz. I'm almost to organizer. This motivates people? It absolutely does. And there's some that are all the way up to, you know, leader and patriot, and I'm working my way there. Now, my producer back there tricked me into putting it on my phone. <laughs> so now my friends are going to have their privacy invaded by you? Absolutely not. However, in 2012, Obama supporters did have their privacy invaded. You may not necessarily know very much about the campaign and how much it knew about you. Obama's campaign is watching you. Sounds like Orwell. I don't remember any ire, but I do remember a lot of people who wanted to volunteer for the campaign. Innovation doesn't work without it being accessible.
But people were very uncomfortable, and as a result, Facebook decided to shut down this feature. Sounds like Ted Cruz is doing something pretty close. The difference is this time they're telling you that they are going through your friend list, and they ask for your permission, and they tell you everything that they collect. Shouldn't we be nervous that our candidates are spying on us? Some people feel that it's a little manipulative, that campaigns are trying to use this data to shape behavior, try to tell you what you want to hear. This is sleazy. It just lets you pander to certain people, give them what they want. If I'm talking to you about Common Core and the only thing you care about is foreign policy, defeating ISIS, making sure the Iran Treaty is thrown out on the first day in office, well then I've done a complete disservice to you as a voter because you don't know where Ted Cruz stands. Ted Despite Cruz. running fewer commercials than other candidates, Cruz, by using data to target potential supporters and then convincing those people to go to caucuses, won a surprising victory in Iowa. That's the power of technology, is it amplifies the voice of each of us. A slick Hollywood TV ad has its limits. Using technology to communicate with, to empower the grassroots, that's the key to winning politics in the 21st century.